Guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the afternoon two last sessions of this conference. Uh, in addition to the, I'm sure, riveting remarks that Dr. Anthony will give at the end of the two sessions. And then we close out, we adjourn for the year, this International uh, Policymakers Conference. My name is Elizabeth Wilson, currently Treasurer of the Board of Directors of the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relation. As I introduce our distinguished speaker momentarily, let me just rem remark that the history of foreign assistance both before the U.S. Agency for International Development uh, was uh, founded in 1961 and to the current has had its uh, ebb and flow. Um, outside the Beltway especially, uh, often enough Americans think of development assistance aid as, as uh, one of those uh, superfluous tax-eating bureaucratic activities. Um, the fact is that um, foreign assistance is, um, is a very uh, important component of uh, U.S. foreign policy, as any development assistance is um, around the uh, globe. Uh, and it can really be simply summed up, as was said uh, at some point in this conference, that development is key to everyone's security, economic, social, political, and, and it is a uh, very important uh, strategy, strategic instrument of the foreign policy portfolio of uh, this and other countries. Uh, to, um, the, the listed speaker, by the way, could not join us today, but we do have, uh, the, uh, the, the agency was kind enough to send us a very apt substitute, and I will introduce him in this moment. Um, uh, Mr. Let's see, Mr. Bruce Abrams. I will read his short bio, as you will not have it in your booklets. Uh, Mr. Bruce Abrams is Deputy Assistant Administrator in U.S.'s Middle East Bureau. He is directly in charge of programs in Yemen, Tunisia, Morocco, Libya, as well as the technical support team and the Middle East region platform. He is a senior Foreign Service officer and has served as a democracy and governance officer in Iraq and Egypt, as well as Colombia and Peru, totally different part of the world. Before he took his latest Washington assignment, Mr. Abraham, in January, he was USAID's deputy mission director in Zimbabwe, Africa. Prior to joining the USAID Foreign Service, Abrams was a US Peace Corps volunteer in Hungary and contractor with, U with USAID mission in Hungary and Serbia. He has his Bachelor's of Art in History from Boston University and a Master's degree in Urban and Regional Planning from the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA for short. Help me welcome Mr. Abrams. Uh, interns, if they uh, could lend a hand when they hear any noise in the back, would you please diplomatically find the way to walk with them out where they can chant and, and obey the signs, and honor the signs. Thank you. Good uh, diplomatic advice there, Dr. Anthony. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you had a good lunch. I know I did. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the kind introduction and for the the kind words about uh, the importance of, of development assistance. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Anthony and the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relations for the invitation to address the annual Policymakers Conference. The discussions you're having, you've had, and I hope you will continue to have, can definitely influence how we navigate today's challenges and those ahead. I know you were expecting to hear from Maria Longhi, USAID's Acting Assistant Administrator for the Middle East. But, um, well, we often talk at USAID about spreading the values of civic involvement and civic responsibility. And sometimes we're reminded of that and our responsibilities on a very basic level. This morning, Maria was called to jury duty and is thus now performing an act of fundamental and important civic responsibility. So here I am. Thank you very much for the opportunity for the, uh, and thank you to the DC court system, I suppose, for calling Maria to uh, accomplish her civic duty today. 
The new USAID administrator, Ambassador Mark Green, also send, sends his regards, and he wants you to know that the Middle East and U.S. Arab relations are a priority for our agency and for the U.S. government. On a global note, over his first few months in office, Ambassador Green has reminded us that the ultimate purpose of foreign assistance must be to end the need for foreign assistance. In other words, our goal as USAID and with foreign assistance is, help, is to help set the stage for local leaders, civil society, and private business at the local level to meet the challenges that their own countries face. In other words, our job is to work our way out of a job in every country in which we work in. I don't need to tell this group that the opportunities and challenges are great in the Middle East and North Africa. I am here, however, to tell you that the people of USAID and the US government recognize that the best way to meet this ultimate goal of working ourselves out of a job is to invest in local leaders, local expertise, and private enterprise. Working alongside all of you is key to tackle the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities for real and sustainable development across the region. I'd like to start today with a very short introduction about USAID's work in the Middle East and North Africa. Our budget numbers, assistance levels, and business forecasts are all available online. So today I want to spend much of my time talking about the partners who make our work possible. And I want to share with you some stories about the people we come across in our work because that's really the fun part and the inspiring part of what we do. And in my opinion, their stories are the best way that we can tell our story. In the US foreign policy community, we often talk about the three Ds, diplomacy, development, and defense, though we don't always talk about them in that order. But these are the three pillars that provide a foundation for promoting and protecting not only U.S. national security interests, but also our economic and diplomatic interests. I know you heard yesterday from General, General Votel, and I'm happy to say that throughout the U.S. government, at both the leadership and working levels, there is wide agreement that all three pillars are important for stability and prosperity. I'd like to talk today about the development role, which I think is crucial. My bureau the, bureau, the Bureau of Middle East here at USAID, supports development programs in 10 places in the region. Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, West Bank and Gaza, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Morocco. These programs are all different, driven by local needs and local priorities in each country and each sub-region of the region. Where we can, we work as much as possible with local partners. And we also work hard to coordinate with other parts of the US government, with other countries, and international organizations. I can tell you from firsthand experience that our friends and allies in the region greatly appreciate our work. We are their partner as they work to maintain stability and improve the lives of their own people. We can't do any of our work, however, without strong partnerships. These days, partnerships go beyond the traditional contracting relationships that we have with private sector implementing partners. While there's still room for that, and that's absolutely necessary and vital, some of the greatest opportunities for lifting lives and strengthening communities emerge from the people and communities themselves. Ambassador Green calls this enterprise-driven development. And as he recently said, Telling our partners what to do and how to do it often misses the point. Our partnerships in humanitarian assistance are long established and well known. USAID works through UN organizations with other donor countries as well as international and local NGOs to get the right assistance to the people who need it on a timely basis. Our disaster assistance response teams do incredible work. And USAID's Syria and Iraq team was honored last month, for instance, for showing some of the best of America to the world. 
Our response to the humanitarian crisis in Yemen is largely through the traditional UN and NGO channels. But we are also engaging new donors to help meet unprecedented needs. We have a humanitarian expert from the USAID Office of US Foreign Disaster Assistance advising the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, for instance. We are also building up our early recovering programming in Yemen. In those programs, we work with local and international partners to restore and strengthen health and education systems, improve livelihoods, and scale up service delivery to vulnerable populations. Sometimes the unique circumstances in which we work call for innovative partnerships. The Syria Recovery Trust Fund is just one example. This is a multinational mechanism established outside of the World Bank and UN organizations. Members now include two host nations, Turkey and Jordan, in addition to 12 international donor countries. The United States, Germany, and the United Arab Emirates are the original donors. The trust fund finances Syrian-led projects inside Syria, like providing equipment and engineers to rehabilitate and expand electrical and water networks, refurbishing medical facilities, and buying wheat and equipment to get bakeries back up and running. Its projects have helped more than two million Syrians. In Tunisia and throughout the region, USAID and its partners are helping private enterprises address the critical issue of unemployment and underemployment, particularly among young people. I was recently in Tunisia and visited one of our programs that helped create more than 15,000 jobs. It assisted 300 enterprises and leveraged more than $2 million in technical assistance to encourage over $35 million in direct investment. Another program I saw in Tunisia works with Hewlett Packard and the UN to help young entrepreneurs in some of Tunisia's more remote regions turn good ideas into tangible businesses. USAID's effectiveness is reflected in the people and communities we help. When you think about USAID, I don't want you to think about this beautiful building in which we occupy or about me. I want you to see some of the specific people we've helped. They're the face of USAID. People we've helped with our humanitarian and development assistance. It's about the people. Earlier this year, we visited projects in West Bank, Jordan, and Iraq, and made virtual visits to projects inside of Syria. We listened to children in a US -sponsored, USAID sponsored school in Jordan who are learning to read and to think critically. We spoke with a Syrian engineer rehabilitating a water system so people can return home to their community. We saw an, unex uh, an expanded pediatric hospital that now can better treat both Jordanians and refugees and we were welcomed into a home in a small village in the West Bank where the village matriarch thanked the American people because she now has running water in her home for the first time in her life. The future of the region is in the hands of the young people we've helped. People like three teenage girls at the Mahdi STEM Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math School we supported in Cairo. They went on to win Intel's Global Science Fair competition. One plans to be a nuclear physicist, one a computer scientist, one a mechanical engineer. And they all help hope to change the world and their communities for the better. We can't forget, however, that it's not all about high tech. Take the story of Saeed in Yemen, a father of six who struggled to support his children after the conflict broke out. Then he found work with one of our humanitarian assistance partners. He helped fix water sources, a critical job that is providing safe drinking water for his community. In exchange for his work, in addition to his salary, Saeed received funding to start a small business selling shaving supplies. He said he's grateful for the help. The funding he received to start his own business will give him the opportunity to help save his family. In conclusion, USAID's work to foster inclusive development and economic opportunity plays an important role in building stable and prosperous societies. Those countries can then in turn be good neighbors and help enhance regional and global economic opportunities for everyone. Stable, prosperous societies are critical to the broader network of global security. We see our work as an investment 
in the stability and prosperity of the Middle East and North Africa. It's important to remember that as people like Saeed in Yemen and those girls in, in the STEM program who ultimately be, will be responsible for that stability and prosperity and will benefit from it. Thank you for your attention and for all that you all do to continue to connect the people of the United States and the people of the Middle East and North Africa. Thank you.